Greetings everyone, welcome back to Lamex FX. Last time we discussed how the Bible's laws are actually political. Political meaning that it's anything that has to do with government, or in this case, to help a race of people construct a country and government. And yet, this episode, this is the beginning of everything. Everything you need to know about the Bible. It all begins here. Also, remember when I said that I would prove that the Bible's religion is a real religion? Well, today is the day that I do that. Now, let us begin. Alright, how will we do this? Today, we are going to put everything we have learned from the last four videos to use. Remember that the way to tell that a god or his laws are real is if they happen as he said they would. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 23 says, Show the things that are to come hereafter, that we may know that ye are gods. Ye do good or do evil, that we may be dismayed and behold it together. Showing us what shall happen is called prophecy. So prophesying is saying, this shall happen, or this shall come to pass. For example, Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 15, But it shall come to pass. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So it is prophesied that if one breaks the commandments, then certain bad things would happen. This book and chapter, Deuteronomy 28, lists the things that God says will happen. Well, at least the book and chapter from verse 15 down. There are also these curses that are prophesied in Leviticus 26. Leviticus 26 verses 14 through 16 says, But if ye will not hearken unto me, and will not do all these commandments, and if ye shall despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor my judgments, so that ye will not do all my commandments, but that ye break my covenant, I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, and the burning ague that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart, and ye shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. Therefore, the idea is if the things listed in Deuteronomy 28 and Leviticus 26 happen to the people who broke God's laws, then God is real. So, we are going to examine how the prophecies of the Bible happen in Final Fantasy X. Why? Well, for two reasons. First, I want to give a visual representation of what the curses look like. Secondly, I want to show the biblical race of the humans of Spira. Why is that important? Well, according to the Bible, the religion is so real that you don't choose it. It chooses you. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee, and shall pursue thee, and overtake thee till thou be destroyed, because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. See, it says that the curses will chase you no matter where you run, in the same way that sin chases the humans. But the next verse adds more context. Verse 46, And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder, and upon thy seed forever. Therefore, the curse would be upon a certain race of people and would chase after them and their children forever. Such as, did you notice that sin doesn't attack Guado, Hypello, Ronso, or anyone else? It only attacks the humans, so that in the Meehan operation, the only ones who were concerned about sin to try to fight him were the two groups of humans. The humans are the targeted race. And this is what I need to prove that the religion is true. I need to find an event that not only is exactly as the Bible said it was, it must also be rare, something that most races have not experienced. So, as I list these curses, I'm going to tell you the history of a race that went through them, but I won't tell you what the race is called. You'll just have to figure it out. Again, here is the setup. We will look at an event in the game, specifically Xanarkin being destroyed. I will read the scriptures that apply to this event, 
And I will tell you the history of this race that directly ties to the curses that I'm reading. Ready? Let's go. Okay, first, a little background. I want to give you a little history on Xanarkin and a background on this mystery race I'm talking about. Because it wouldn't be enough for me to say, oh, they broke the commandment and then they got cursed. No, I want to show exactly what commandments they broke and how exactly breaking those commandments directly caused these curses. That will show that they are, in fact, bound by these rules, that they are this people's religion. So. Zerkin and Bavel were having a war. Yes, two groups of the same race of people. There is a legend, you know. Just before the horrible sin appeared, a terrible war raged between Bavel and Zanarkin. Zanarkin was losing, so they created Sin to defeat Bavel. But Sin didn't just destroy Bavel, it destroyed everyone, all human cities, including Zerkin, who created it. Why is this important? Well, back to my mystery race. They had a problem with each other. Namely, that they had wars. Yes, different groups of the same race of people. The winners would sacrifice the losers to their gods, obviously breaking the commandments. They broke Exodus 20 and 13 that says thou shalt not kill by murdering each other. They broke Leviticus 18:21 that says, and thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Molech, neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God, I am the Lord. They broke it by sacrificing their brother to their god. Now, because of this, the losing tribes hated their brothers who were killing them. So, they broke the commandment. Leviticus 19, 17, and 18 says, And thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor, and not suffer sin upon them. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, I am the Lord. And because they held grudges against their brethren, they wanted revenge. Now, do you see how sin is coming out of the ocean in this scene right here? In the same way the aliens, a foreign race of people, came from across the sea as punishment against our protagonists. Deuteronomy 28 verse 49, the Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flyeth a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. And when the losers of this protagonist race saw that the aliens had weapons like guns, cannons, and other advanced things, they thought that this is how they get their revenge. So the losers broke another commandment. Exodus chapter 23 verses 32 and 33. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor with their gods, they shall not dwell in the land, lest they make thee sin against me. For if thou serve their gods, it shall surely be a snare unto thee. They broke this commandment by making an agreement or covenant with the aliens that they would teach them how to farm and dwell in the land. In exchange, these aliens would help them defeat their brother. In other words, these natives are Xanarkin building another race of people, Sin, to defeat their brothers who represent Vavel. But, just like with Sin, the aliens didn't only attack and enslave the enemies, they also enslaved the natives who they originally had an agreement with. They destroyed everything. The war ended, and our reward was Sin. So, Sin's our punishment for letting things get out of hand, eh? Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 52. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates, until thy high and fenced walls come down, wherein thou trustest, throughout all thy land. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates, throughout all thy land, which the Lord thy God hath given thee. If at any time they had kept the commandments, this wouldn't have happened. Now, let's see sin destroy everything. It begins. What? 
don't cry. It's funny that the humans called this creature Sin, because when the mystery race went against the aliens, the aliens were so strong that our mystery race couldn't stand against them. Like Sin, as they destroyed everything, they were so powerful, so terrible, that you could call them nothing but the devil. Leviticus chapter 26, verse 37. And they shall fall one upon another, as it were before a sword, when none pursue it and ye shall have no power to stand before your enemies. Next. Don't matter. We cut through. Don't forget that our objective is to locate curses in Deuteronomy chapter 28 and Leviticus chapter 26. Let's see, these creatures are called Sin Scale. They fly in like military airplanes. But I already read a verse about them besieging all the gates. But since they are fiends, and fiends look and act like animals, Leviticus chapter 26 and verse 22. I will also send wild beasts among you which shall rob you of your children, and destroy your cattle, and make you few in number, and your highways shall be desolate. Ha, it's funny that we're fighting on a highway. Anyway, incidentally, the same race of people I was talking about earlier has a history of being hunted by dogs. The aliens with sick dogs on them who would tear this mystery race and their children apart. Again, I won't tell you what race this is or what land they're native to. You'll just have to figure it out. But since I'm tired of saying mystery race, well, since the other race are called aliens, I'm going to call this mystery race natives. Don't bother going after all of them. Cut the ones that matter and run. So this sin spawn has a power called Demi. It's a technique that cuts your player's health in half, literally breaking the power of your players. Leviticus chapter 26, verse 19. And I will break the pride of your power, and I will make your heaven as iron and your earth as brass. 
of note, in other languages, the spell Demi is actually called gravity. In other words, it's supposed to press you down. This is how it makes you weaker. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 33. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up, and thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled always. Because oppressed has a root word pressed in it. Speaking of being pressed down to break your power, the race of people from my experimental group, the natives, were forced into schools. These schools were to force the children to forget their history, their heritage, patriotism, and, well, everything about them. The schools were meant to crush them. Literally, the slogan of the school was, kill the native, save the man. Because they wanted these natives to be strong enough to work and produce fruits for the aliens to eat, but weak enough mentally that they can be controlled. And you can't control a race who has their roots in their history. In other words, this is how you would make a race, physically strong and mentally weak. You know, it's sad that as I read all these curses, all these bad things, if they had at any time kept the commandment, none of this would have happened. What are you laughing at, old man? Lauren, let's get out of here! We are expected. Huh? Give me a break, man! Oh, the Sinskill are flying in like eagles now. Oh wait, I already used a verse about as swift as an eagle fly. Okay, Leviticus chapter 26, verse 17. And I will set my face against you, and ye shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you shall reign over you, and ye shall flee when none pursueth. So even though Xanarkin is has a home field advantage, sin is still overpowering them. Also, the natives, they were overpowered by the aliens who had to cross the sea in order to even get to them. How is that even possible? I know that someone somewhere is thinking, because the aliens had better technology, like better weapons, guns, and cannons and stuff, that they just couldn't be defeated. But the truth is, when you're sailing across the ocean, none of that matters. Because when you're sailing across the ocean, your crewmates are becoming disoriented from being on their ship for so long and they're becoming sick from being on a ship for so long and they're hungry because you have been exhausting your food on the way there and when you get to the place you're going to you don't already have a settlement so there's not food already waiting for you you don't have know how to farm the land so you can't replenish your food and also because you don't have a settlement already there you don't have weapons and ammunition already waiting for you either and with that, you only have a limited amount of ammunition you can fight with. And because this is not your land, you don't know where to mine for more metals. You don't have a settlement, so you don't have workshops to make more weapons. So you have a limited food supply and limited ammunition, and you don't know anything about the land. And also, you don't know where all the hiding places are because this land is new for you. But your enemies know where all the hiding places are because they are natives to the land. And they know exactly where it is you're coming from because you only have a few ports where you're coming in from. So they can take you by surprise and you will never see them coming. And also, because you're sailing from across the ocean on a boat, you have a limited supply of how many people you can send as soldiers to fight because you have a limited supply of boats and a limited capacity that you can send people on those boats to get there but your enemies the natives have an entire continent and unlimited supply of warriors to fight you to overpower you at any time and while you're running out of bullets trying to take care of an unlimited amount of enemies they have an unlimited supply of weapons because their weapons were bows arrows and other things in the land 
as well as things having to do with animals and as you're trying to chase them because they know the land they can set up traps and make you fall into quicksand you are at a stark disadvantage no matter what which basically means if at any time the natives kept the commandment none of this would have happened hmm. this could be bad that knock it down what trust me you'll see You know, as I see this sign coming down, I could repeat that verse about the high and fist walls coming down, but I have a more interesting verse. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 43 and 44. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. So. As you see the sin spot filling the land like locusts, you also see the power of Xanakin coming down. The verse I read to you means that the native race would become minorities. They would come down and be the serving class, the slaves, to the people who conquered them. Which is also interesting because the people of Spira serve sin by sacrificing to it summoners and also stronger and stronger aeons to make it more and more powerful. So, did you figure out who my mystery race is? If you have that history, and this is your people, you may say that this game called Final Fantasy X is about you. And that would be surprising, wouldn't it? Also, the Bible so closely tells your story that it tells you exactly how you could have avoided everything. If at any time you kept the commandment, none of this would have happened. If you hadn't helped the aliens, they wouldn't have been able to set up settlements and bases in your land. If your people didn't kill each other, no one would have helped your enemies. If you loved your brethren as yourselves and didn't hate each other, you would have banded together to drive the aliens from your land. But since you were divided, you were easy to conquer. The curse that you received was a direct result of your own actions. When you broke the commandment, this is what happened. But the nightmares of Final Fantasy X do not end. In this game, the humans are forced to follow a religion where they bow down to statues, hoping this would save them from sin. The teachings state that we can exercise sin with complete atonement. It's been our only hope all these years. In the same way, if this is your history, you and your people were forced to follow Christianity, a religion that your ancestors never had. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 36. The Lord shall bring thee and thy king which thou shalt set over thee unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. And there shalt thou serve other gods, wood and stone. Also, the characters of this game are not a large population. Towns don't usually get bigger than that. Because when a lot of people start to gather, Sin? Hmm. And you don't have a large population either. If we took a census, you'd make up, say, 2.9% of the population. Basically 3%, right? Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 62. And you should be left few in number, whereas you were as the stars of heaven for multitude, because thou wouldest not obey the voice of the Lord thy God. Oh wait, I got one. In this game, Seymour Guado wanted to have an interracial marriage with Yuna. There was a time when you became rich because your people found oil. And remember in a 
previous episode when I said that the Bible says not to marry other races. And remember how racist that sounded? So, what happened? You broke the commandment and married the aliens. And your spouses, these aliens, killed you and took your oil. Now, you're poor again. I will take from you your strength, you know, your life, and become the next sin. I will destroy Spira. If at any time you kept the commandment, you know what? Never mind. As long as I play this game, I can find more events that relate to you. What? You've been fighting 800 years and you still haven't beat it? Almost as if this is your story. And in these events, I can find biblical scriptures because this Bible, this is your story. Oh right, the name of the race this curse was supposed to chase, I forgot. Actually, I think I'll tell you next time. I will tell you what your story is about, and I will tell you how to reverse everything that has ever happened to you. So, don't forget to subscribe, because who else will answer your questions? Who will answer, why did the religion choose you and your race? In fact, I have a challenge for you, because when I speak to this race, they say that their religion is older than the Bible. And some would excuse themselves saying that they didn't have the Bible so they didn't know all this would happen. So go to Google and type in this phrase. The phrase is stone block of the Ten Commandments found in. And then after that, enter in the name of the continent you think this race is from. Then after you read the articles, explain to me why you already had the Bible before the aliens came with it. And if Christianity is supposed to be biblical, why did no one ever tell you about this? I've always walked the path of Yevon. You know everything about Christianity. You know Christmas, Lent, Ash Wednesday, the Virgin Mary, Easter, Ave Maria, Communion, Good Sunday, everything. They taught you everything except this. Why? Why is it that of all the time they taught you Christianity, at no time did they teach you the commandment? I'll give you one guess. Don't cry. It's almost as if there are certain things in the Bible that you are not meant to understand. Some things that they didn't want to teach you. Nothing but a bunch of low-down tricksters, eh? In the hero's journey, this is your call to adventure. This is your turning point. In these last five episodes, you have learned how to use the Bible to define words. And suddenly, heaven isn't in the sky, it's on earth. With you having your own land. And suddenly, hell isn't under the ground, it is the loss of your land and your freedom. And suddenly, words like deliverance and salvation and being saved do not mean to go into the sky. Deliverance is to return to a time before the aliens came, to a time when they were gone. But, but if we atone for our crimes, sin will stop coming back, yeah? Someday it'll be gone, yeah? And suddenly you realize the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives. You are captive. And suddenly, because of what you've seen in this game and what you've read in the Bible, suddenly the word deliverance takes a different meaning. Christianity was once a fleeting dream, but someday the dream will end. Oh, and other viewers, are you also oppressed? Have you also been conquered? Are you minorities too? Good because I have a story for all of you. This is it. This is your 
story. It all begins here. Next time on Lamex Effects.